Hello, I'm Jamie and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be talking about episode 5 of series 5 of Ghosts, which is the episode called Carpe Diem. And this is the penultimate episode of series 5. We've got the Christmas episode, so it's not quite the, the second to last yet. We're very close to the end. Um, and this is an episode that loads of us have been waiting for the entire series. Yeah, let's just get straight into it. I loved the way this episode starts um, with the with it being the anniversary, so the anniversary of the day that Annie moved on, and Robin coming up with this idea that there is a pattern to the way that ghosts move on, which I quite enjoyed them kind of trying to figure out why ghosts move on. I know that it wasn't really touched on too much, but this idea that it is random for like which ghost moves on but there is a pattern to it which I thought was quite interesting and for me I felt this was a way of Robin trying to figure things out a little bit maybe as a comfort to why he hasn't moved on because he's like the one that's been there the longest and instead of coming to the realization that something needs to happen for him to move on kind of just that it's random it's in the stars it's kind of predetermined in a way so he hasn't like done something wrong to not move on. I know that's kind of what I get from it. And he's kind of at peace with both staying there and moving moving on. The introduction of this idea that one of the ghosts is gonna move on before the end of the episode made it really, really stressful, especially because we kind of knew that it'd be about the captain. It'd either be this episode or the next episode. And coupled together, the fact that we're gonna find something out about the captain and that there might be a ghost moving on, it was very, very anxiety inducing. Um, but I thought this set up the episode really, really well. I, I think it led to the characters doing really interesting things. So we had Fanny um, coming up with a bucket list, doing things that she hadn't done before she moves away. And this was absolutely hilarious. I absolutely loved this. The uh, the skinny dipping with when it revealed that her hair was super, super long and her going on the quad bike. It was just, I really enjoyed that. I thought it was really interesting to see Fanny like let loose and just have a bit of fun. Um, which yeah, I really, really enjoyed that. And then we had obviously Julian wanting to go out with a bang, as he said, and trying to find somebody who's up for sleeping with him and eventually settling on one of the basement ghosts. Not really surprised about that, but I loved the the scene of him in the basement, like clubbing with all the basement ghosts. I thought that was really fun. Um, and yeah, so I thought this episode, it was just a set up really really well. We had Kitty not really being too affected by it which I was quite surprised by. She was just kind of excited to see what the next layer would be which then draws into what we had with Mary um, and Kitty being told that there was all different layers to the afterlife which I thought was really sweet and yeah I like that she wasn't scared or, or worried in any way. She was just kind of looking forward to whoever it was experiencing that next layer. Um, and then deciding to try and make Humphrey whole again so that he wouldn't be left without a body or his body, like his head wouldn't move on without the body, you know, all that kind of stuff. And I thought Kitty was absolutely hilarious in this and Humphrey, again, we've got so much Humphrey in this season, which I absolutely love. And her like trying to coach and like get the, the body without spooking it to put the head back on and eventually jumping on it. I just thought it was really nice to see Humphrey like whole like and move around. Um, I thought that was really sweet and I really liked, yeah, the Humphrey and Kitty interactions because they don't really interact too much. So I really enjoyed that part of it as well. We then also had Thomas being quite worried that he hadn't made an impression on the world and people wouldn't remember him for his poetry. You know, the fact that even the captain and Pat didn't remember one line from his poem that he'd recited hundreds of times, which is something that I think is definitely quite relatable, this idea that you have to be remembered for something that you've done rather than than who you are, which is what they eventually make Thomas realise, is that they'll remember him for being Thomas, they'll remember like his friendship and everything like that. But it's not a requirement to be remembered for something that you've done. Like that's not the most important thing. It's about who you are, which I thought was a really sweet message. There's lots of really like nice things going on here. Pat again, we didn't really get too much from Pat, just kind of him being in denial and slipping into an American accent because he was scared. But um, yeah, his whole thing was just wanting to be together with all the other ghosts. I think that was really sweet. Just wanting this, all of his friends, his family together, just in, you know, enjoying each other's company, doing some fun things and the line dancing. So I just thought that everybody had a really nice moment in this. Um, and I think it was quite interesting to see what their 
approaches and their reactions would be to something being so stressful this idea that one of them is going to move on um and yeah ultimately it didn't happen which was which was nice but um yeah the the clock counting the clock counting down to midnight was just too stressful but yeah i'm very happy that nobody moved on i thought it would have been quite interesting if we had like maddox move on like the ghost that was in the field that we saw in the last season um and saw like him move on so like robin's theory was right and then of course we had the captain and oh this was as emotional as i thought it would be it was very very stressful um again as i said coupled with the fact that we knew this was going to happen we knew we we're going to get a backstory coupled with the fact that there was this um idea that one of them would move on it was very very stressful and they kept kind of teasing it you know him looking out the window we got the mini little flashback of like the victory day on the house yeah i thought the mini flashback was quite interesting because it kind of showed that it was haunting him and that something like bad happened we knew something bad happened because he died but we knew there was something bad there and yeah it was very very stressful obviously from the trailer we knew it was a victory party where that made him go back to Button House and eventually that's where he died. But what we didn't know is that he wasn't invited to that victory party and that hurt me. I thought that was really sad considering how much he pride him, like he prides himself on being um, involved in the war effort and he wasn't invited back to the house where he worked. That was just so sad and I think it really ties into him not being accepted in society as a gay man and also him not being accepted as a war hero either and yeah just that double feeling of not being accepted and that's really sad and I think it's really nice that he is now accepted into this ghost family and accepted in society even though him not personally because he's not alive. What I did like is when he did arrive to the house we got a little glimpse of Mary which I thought was really sweet. I was very happy to see her like she's not been forgotten about which I really like. Like I knew they wouldn't forget about her because she is such a she was such an important character in the show but I love that little you know cameo we got from from Mary and then we also got the answer as to why his badges were upside down which was something that I never would have picked up on if it weren't for people in the comments noticing that the um that the badges was the wrong way around and there were so many interesting theories as to why this would happen but the reason it was was obviously because he broke into the house and stole some of these badges and put them on himself and yeah again just this whole thing was just driven by the fact that he wanted to see Havers which was just devastating and seeing Havers with all the scars on his like face um you know just showing that he was you know obviously been in a very dangerous situation and survived I love that they saw each other straight away from the um like from across the room I thought it was all very very like kind of like romantic they obviously knew why he was there and there's all these things that they haven't said to each other that those, I don't know how long it was, it felt like ages, but those like 30 seconds to a minute of him being confronted by the other people when he's just wanting to go speak to Havers. Oh God, it, that honestly, it was so, so anxiety inducing. It was, I felt, oh God, I felt horrible for him. Um, yeah, it was very, very stressful. And that obviously caused a heart attack. And I'm guessing it's kind of like caused by like a panic attack, anxiety attack or something like that. Um, just from, you know, that, feeling of being confronted and it triggering something in him that was heartbreaking ironically and yeah the fact that Havers was there they said so much in like so few words to each other him telling him that he had to find him and like it was it was so so heartbreaking and I think the fact that they knew each other's first names as well and said them to each other just shows to me that they maybe perhaps did have a closer relationship um than than what we see like i'm not thinking they actually were in a relationship but that they obviously were closer than it, they would be with other members of the um of the team because everyone in the like army is kind of referred to by their rank or their surname whereas here they were talking to each other with their first names and maybe that's just me reading a bit into it because we just haven't heard the captain's name like he's just always the captain like he is referred to by his rank so you'd imagine that most people would just refer to each other as their as their rank and wouldn't necessarily know their first names or anything like that and obviously the most lovely thing that we got from this was that the stick that captain is always carrying around is Havers' stick and 
that I thought was so nice that he's carrying a piece of Havers throughout his afterlife. Yeah, I love the fact that he's always got a piece of Havers with him in his afterlife. It's, you know, that it's like a gift from Havers, an acknowledgement that the feelings that the captain shared for Havers were also shared vice versa and I yeah it was all very very nice and very very emotional and then they had to go and do line dancing to achy breaky heart which was that was just mean <laughs> um but I thought that was it was a really nice episode I think it's something that we've we've obviously all wanted it for so long and I think they did it so so well and one thing that we've we've obviously thought that there's been a lot of shame attached to the captain's death and it was kind of inferred that the shame might be due to his sexuality, but I don't think that at all now. I think his shame is definitely from him being not a war hero. They really, The ghosts really summed it up where they said that, yeah, he might not be a war hero, but he is a brave man. And I thought that was a really nice acknowledgement for, you know, him essentially coming out to them eventually and them just saying, you know, you're brave for what you went through. And I thought that was really, really nice. And I think, yeah, like I said, a really nice acknowledgement to all the struggle that all the struggles that he's had and this very very emotional plot line was contrasted with Alison and Mike wanting to go on one last night out before they uh, had a baby first of all I did think it was kind of sweet the Barkley dropped off all the baby stuff I know he was just mainly doing it to get rid of all the stuff that he had but I thought it was nice that he at least acknowledged the fact that they didn't have much and gave it to them instead of just throwing it away. Like again, it's putting the issue of, of sorting all the bad stuff out to them, but I did think it was nice that they perhaps do have a slightly closer relationship than, what's, than what they did have before. So that was quite nice. Um, and I thought this plot line was quite, not, quite good as well because I think it probably is relatable to a lot of new parents where, you know, there's this big change. They're never going to be just the two of them. It's always, they're always going to have something and a third person to look after and to consider that like their, their lives are going to change. So I thought this was somewhat, I mean, I haven't had a child, but I imagine it's quite relatable. I absolutely loved Mike getting so, so drunk off tequila and like having a nap in the toilets at 11 o'clock. Like, it was just so funny and I thought, it, like I said, it was a nice contrast to the very heavy stuff that we had going on in the um, in the rest of the episode. Not only just from the captain, but from everyone else's fear that, that this might be their last night on as a ghost. So yeah, I thought it was a very, very fun contrast and them joining in at the end with the line dancing, just emphasising how much of like a family they are and like how they're all friends, even like with Mike having fun, just with Alison and knowing there's all these other people around that are having fun. I just thought it was, it was a really nice end to the episode, a very emotional episode. Um, but yeah, I liked all of the Obi stuff and going out with Obi and Brenda and again, showing the different stages they all are in life. I think they're a good contrast to Alison and Mike, just to kind of show the different stages in life that they're both at, even though they're the same age. Like, I'm not sure what job Obi did, but Brenda working at a bank, quite responsible. They're perhaps being a bit more sophisticated by drinking wine instead of tequila, you know, that kind of thing. Whereas Alison and Mike are having this one last irresponsible night out before they have to go on and be responsible. I mean, Alison's still being responsible because she's not drinking, but they're just trying to have this last bit of fun. Um, before they have this responsibility and then Obi and Brenda are trying to be you know careful and responsible because they've got jobs to go to and I think it just kind of shows the differences in like you know stages of life. Overall this was such a fantastic episode it gave us everything we wanted to do with the captain and yeah it was just beautiful. If you like this video then please give it a like and comment down below your thoughts on this episode and subscribe if you want to see more videos to do with ghosts. I'll have some more out for you soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!